Uh, I believe that God is awesome. And how many people believe in miracles? Amen. Amen. I believe in miracles. That's what we're. Been, that's what I've been ministering on all month. Um, uh, so we want to. I want to talk to you about miracles this morning. And God is so awesome. And we've been taking a look at the Christmas story. And we've been looking at um, <clears throat> uh, the different people in the Christmas story. And let's just go in prayer before we get started. Father, we honor you today. And I just ask that you think through my mind. Speak through my lips your very words. And Father, I ask that you give us hearing ears to hear what your spirit is saying. And we endeavor to give you all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God is so good. I am excited about the new building that we will be getting and we'll be into and uh, sometime in 2018. And I'm, t- I'm talking about we're going to get it. Amen. Amen. And you got and somebody say, get some faith. Get some faith. Amen. And that's going to be the key for you to see miracles in your life. Amen. And so we are talking about miracles and, you know, I, I'm talking to you about keys to miracles. And, and, you know, just to recap a little bit. On what I ministered on the first week uh, on miracles, we talked about the, the wise men that sought out Jesus, the magi that sought out Jesus. And, you know, uh, they, they searched the scriptures. They found, you know, Jesus in the scriptures. And I'm going to say this. Every time we search the scriptures, we should be always looking for Jesus. Amen. In other words, we should be always looking at, when we look at the scriptures, Jesus is grace and truth. And so when we look in the scriptures, we should always see grace and truth. Yes. Amen. Amen. Some people just see judgment. But if you're seeing judgment, then you need to get right. Amen. Get Jesus. Amen. But I see grace and truth. And so we, we want to see that in the scriptures. And we know the Magi saw that. And they sought Jesus out. And, and, the, and the title of that sermon was, Wise Men Still Seek Him. And you know, if you're a wise, and, and you all must be pretty wise people because you're in church this morning. Amen. It's the unwise person that doesn't seek God. Amen. The Bible says it's the foolish person that doesn't seek God, but wise people seek God. Somebody say, I'm a wise person. I'm a wise person. And so we know that. But what's awesome about God is, is that if you want to see miracles in your life, you're going to have to seek God. You're going to have to diligently seek him. And you're going to, if you want to see breakthrough, you have to have a passion that's, that, that, that exceeds whatever obstacles that might be placed in your way. And you just can't say, you can't take no for an answer. Amen. Uh, am, I, am I preaching to anybody today? And if you, if you're believing God, you just can't take my, my, my daughter, Christina, she doesn't take no for an answer. If she wants a game or she wants something, she's going to get it. She's going to keep pressing and pressing and pressing. Okay, just take it. You know what I'm saying? Anybody have kids in here? Do you know what I'm talking about? Can they wear you down? Amen. <laughs> you know, they wear you down. Amen. And you're like, take it. Amen. And, you know, we really, what it is is the, we, don't, we don't wear God down. What we do is we, we don't put the pressure on God. Well, in a sense, we put the pressure on the word of God. We don't even put pressure on ourselves to see a miracle. We always put the pressure on the word of God and the word of God always delivers. Can I get an amen? Amen. And so the wise men, they sought Jesus out and they sought him out to worship Jesus and to bring gifts. And I'm going to say this, that as we seek God, God wants to do two things. He wants us to be a miracle for somebody. Amen. And amen. And he wants us to see miracles and receive miracles. Do you believe that today? And so I believe this, that miracles are passing us by every day. And we just have to be open to see miracles. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we have to be open to see miracles. And here we we see this, that, that wise men sought him. And uh and so I'm going to say this, that, that the wise men uh, had a vision from God to, to see Jesus, worship him, and bring gifts of gold and bring gifts of, of uh, frankincense and myrrh. And I really believe that, that the wise men were, uh, the, wise men were uh, the miracle for Mary and Joseph. And why do I say that? Because, you know, 
a lot of people, you know, tradition. Can I get out of my seat this morning? Is that all right? Okay. Um, I'm telling you, man, I'm going to get out of my seat. I'm going to get serious today. I might run around this room. Tradition will tell you miracles never happen. Tradition will make you feel like that God never does anything. Tradition will say that you're always on your own. Can I get an amen here? But I'm saying you're not on your own this morning. And if, if, you're, you're in de- if you're encountering a problem today and that problem's too big for you, then, then a miracle's on the way. I want to say this, that the only time we need a miracle when we have a problem too big for us. If the problem's bigger, if the pro- pro- problem's small, we can handle those. But when the problem gets so big, that's when we need God to step in. And see, that's the key. That's, that's the key to seeing miracles in our lives. And, and with, with Joseph uh, and, and Mary, tradition say they were poor, you know. And, you know, I don't believe they were poor people. I don't even believe that Jesus was poor. Well, could, well as, you know, tradition would say Jesus was poor because he didn't have a, you know, uh, uh, a place, to, uh, uh, an inn to be born in. He was born in a stable or a manger. But it, it, the, the story doesn't say that they didn't have the money. It just said there was no room in the inn. OK, so let's not let tradition cloud us because I believe, you know, God wants you to have a financial miracle. He wants you walking in financial miracles. He wants your he wants you blessed. He wants to show you off. He wants you driving the best, living in the best, wearing the best. Amen. Our God's not a poor God. Streets of gold. Now, when Jesus came down here, yeah, yes, it Compared to heaven, Jesus came from heaven. Compared to heaven, this place is dirt poor. Is that right? So, so in a sense, Jesus became poor that through you know, uh, his poverty, we may become wealthy. In other words, he, 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 he let go of his riches in heaven to come down here. And, you know, and, the, and traditions say that he was poor. I don't believe that. Amen. And, uh, and, uh, and so anyway, as we, we continue to read the story, we'll find that the Magi uh, gave gold to uh, Joseph and Mary. And I believe that gold was to help them because they needed to escape to Egypt because uh, King Herod, you know, had a plan to kill Jesus and they needed the finances. I'm going to say where God guides, he provides. Where he leads, he feeds. That means if he led you here this morning, he's going to feed you well. Amen. Amen. The Bible says God will give you pastors that will feed you. Amen. Amen. So you can grow and be strong and healthy and whole. Amen. And so and so and so I believe that that, that the Magi was the miracle for jo- uh, for Joseph and Mary to to get finances to them. And there was one place I'm going to say this. Can I say this? There was one place where Jesus, when he was grown up. He, was, he already had the Spirit of God on him. He was picking his disciples. And his disciples asked him, where are you going? He said, come and see. And the Bible actually said he had his own house. Or he was a carpenter. He, he probably had the best house in town. Amen. Or you hear what I'm saying to you? You think Jesus knows how to build a house? Yes. Amen. It's probably was the, one of the nicest houses in town. Amen. So, so Jesus wasn't poor by any state because he had a treasure. I'm just kind of knocking over some sacred cows this morning because what the devil will try to make you think well jesus was poor and sin to have it's it's sinful to have money no it's sinful for money to have you Amen. it's sinful for money to be your god Amen. no that, that's sinful it's sinful for you to do anything for money amen, amen. are you hearing what i'm saying to you today but it's not a sin for you to have finances so that you can eat well, dress well, and have some finances to give to others. Yeah. Amen? The Bible says the reason why we work is not just to take care of ourselves. It's so that we can have something to give to somebody else. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Amen. Pastor, I'm just making a living. I'm just trying to make it. No, you, you, you need to make a giving. Amen. And I'm going to say this. If you want to see miracles of finances in your life, you need to start releasing some finances. Yeah. Okay. Oh. If you, if you want an uncommon harvest, amen. you better sow an uncommon seed. Amen. Thank you for those amens. Man, you sound like one of those prosperity preachers. But you, you don't want me to tell you how to live poor, do you? You already know how to do that. 
You, don't, you, only, you only teach you how to be broke, do you? Well, I don't have to teach you how to be broke. That comes easy because we're in a world that's set up to come, you know, to keep us down. The world system, amen, it is designed that you got to work with a sweat of your brow. You got you to gotta work it and, and, and toil. But I'm telling you this, when Je I'm going to say this to you today. When Jesus came here, he came so that he can give us the blessing of Abraham. Amen. And I'm telling you, God wants us owning land. Yes, it doesn't belong to the devil and his crowd. Amen. And it's time. Some of you are believing God for a house. It's time. Yes, some, of you got, some of you are believing God for miracle healing. It's time. Amen. Some of you are believing for restoration. It is time. Amen. Now is the time. Amen. And you got to get serious in what you're believing God for. You got to keep pressing in until you see the glory of God. And so when the when the when the magi, the wise men, they had to press in, travel all these months, and listen, you got, you got to be willing to count the costs. Amen. Amen. And press in until you see the fullness of what God has for you. Amen. Amen. And th see, this was the blessing of the magi or the wise men. It was that they received a dream that Herod you know, uh, of what Herod was going to do. And uh, the Lord revealed to him in a dream and to tell them to depart a different way instead of going back to Herod and telling him where, you know, where Jesus was because he wanted them to come back so he could kill Jesus and probably take their heads off too. Hello. So, so what, what is the key here? When you start following God, even when it looks hard, when you start following God, I'm telling you, he will protect you. He, when, you walk, when you start walking upright before God, amen, he will protect you in, in the places that you're going. In other words, divine direction leads to divine protection and provisions. Amen. amen. That is the general rule. When we walk in obedience to God's will and his call for our lives, he will expose the enemy's plan to us for our divine protection. Yes. Do you believe that today? Amen. In other words, the safest place for you to be is in the middle of God's will. Amen. That's the safest place for you to be. Even if God's calling you to be somewhere in some remote country that, that has a lot of turmoil going, if, if God's called you there, he's going to protect you. Do you believe that today? So, so number two, to see a miracle in our lives, we need to serve God faithfully. Amen. To see miracles, praise God. And so this is the key. With We talked about this last week. Zacchaeus... Um, I'm, uh, Zacharias, excuse me, and Elizabeth, uh, they, they were barren. And, and I, you know, man, some of us are believing God. We've been believing God for a building. And I feel like I've been barren for many years. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And I, you know what? That, that building just opened up and I'm excited. Amen. Amen. And so, and, and, and so but, but when you've been believing and, and, and there's things that's missing in your life, uh, you know, we, we, we need to learn to, to stand under the, time, the, the pressure of time because time can wear you down. Yeah, thank you, Lord. And so I talked about last week that we can't grow weary in, in well-doing, in doing what's right. We don't want to give up and let go of the promises. You know, the Bible says when you've done all, stand. So we got to keep standing until we see the blessings of the Lord in our lives. You believe that today? And so we see this, that, that Zacharias and Elizabeth, they were barren. And this is interesting thought. It was in their old age. And God did a miracle with them. And it was, I believe it was beyond child, you know, they were beyond childbearing years. And because, because we know that Zacharias was like, we're too old. I want to say this, you're never too old to see the glory of God in your life. You never, you know, some say, I passed my prime. It's too late for me. I messed up too much. You can't mess up too much for God to move in your life. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? Abraham, the father of our faith, they had an Ishmael. Oh, it's an Ishmael. <laughs> That's just a play on words. Amen. An Ishmael. Okay. In other words, they, they, they didn't do everything right. Abraham did not do everything right. And matter of fact, it, 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 it was some time before God spoke to him again after they had Ishmael. And, uh, and so, but, but when God did speak to him, he said, walk upright before me. 
I'm about to do something in your life. And God didn't even mention his mistake. He said, now it's time. And I'm going to say that sometimes we can mess up. We, we, we can try to go our own way. We can try to work our own situation. We can try to build our own house. But unless the Lord builds a house, they that labor to build it, build it in vain. And, and so even though we maybe try to do some things, there, there will be a time when God will reveal his glory to each one of us. And he revealed it to Abraham and Sarah. And he, and they were at, he was 100 years of age when, he, when they had Isaac, the promised child. Are you here? It's, somebody say, it's never too late. Never too late. It's never too late. And some say, well, yeah, that was a, that was a promise for Abraham. Well, listen, uh, think about Moses. Think about him. He killed somebody. He was, you know, he had some problems and God called him at 80 years of age. Yes. Think about that. Don't tell me, oh, I'm just too old, pastor, to do anything for God. Are you 80 years of age? It, pastor. Not yet. Hallelujah. You know, Smith Wigglesworth, one of the greatest evangelists of all time, you know, back in the 40s. And, you know, he, 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 he served God. He, he got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And he really didn't start moving in the things of God until he was 50 years of age. Hello. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? And some of us get 40 and we haven't done too much for the Lord and think we're over the hill. You're not over the hill at 40. The, uh, if you're 40, you're the new 30. Are you here? Are you? Can I? Are, are you, are you, amen. And so listen, listen, I talked about uh, 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 other people uh, last week, uh, Simeon, the priest, and, and he was old. He was just about ready to die, believing that he would see the promised child. God revealed to him, you're going to see the promised child. And he was at the end of his age, but he still saw the promise. Amen. Anna the prophetess was right, was right there at the right time, doing the right thing in the right way, saw, saw Simeon blessing Jesus, and, then, and God gave her new fresh revelation at her age, and she started preaching that Jesus was on the scene. Something they've been praying for for years to see the Messiah. Listen, you're never too old to get a dream from God. Some of you need to get a dream. Some of you guys need to get fired up. Hallelujah. Some of you need to start thinking about what, you're, what, you need, what you want from God. Yeah. Not what you need. What do you want? Hallelujah. We need to start moving into those places. We need to get our dream back. Yes, yes, I've kind of settled in myself just being comfortable with the theater and with this other building that we, we, uh, we, we have, which is the Pembroke Manor. And I was getting comfortable. And you know, comfortable... Being comfortable is, a, is an enemy to advancing in the kingdom of God. Comfortability, being comfortable, can be your enemy. Some of us were trying to get comfortable in God. No, you, should, you shouldn't be comfortable. It, it, you should walk in peace. You should walk in joy. But you should always be pressing in to more of God. Don't just settle back and say, well, I've done it all. I got it all. You don't have it all. You haven't done it all yet. We should be always pressing. In other words, we should never, you should never get to a point where you retire. You should always refire. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? Uh, there, there's this one famous evangelist, Ora Roberts, and, and, and he did retire from preaching, but he still never really retired because he, was, he had his own house in California and, he, and, and he, uh, people would come to him uh, and he would uh, charge a certain fee so he could live well. And, and people would pay him, I think it was $1,000 to have, to have some time with him so he could mentor them. And it, it helped him. And it was these young preachers coming up and they had no problem sowing $1,000 into his ministry. And they got wisdom. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? And wisdom, I'm telling you, wisdom can be worth more than $1,000. I remember hearing about this one person that said uh, that, that he would, he, uh, he said he would pay a million dollars just for one idea. And this guy gave him one idea and he stroked a check for a million dollars. One idea can change your entire life. One revelation from God can change your whole existence. One word from God 
can change your world. That's why you're in here this morning. For your world, hopefully for your world to be changed. Hopefully we're going from glory to glory. Hopefully we're going from faith to faith. Hopefully we're just not settling. God doesn't want you to settle. He doesn't want you to settle for an average life. He doesn't want you to settle for average health. He doesn't want you settling for average relationships. He doesn't want you settling. How many people are tired of settling? I'm done settling. Glory to God. We're moving forward in 2018. I'm making some decrees. Glory to God. And God's going to do it. Do you believe that today? Amen. And today I want to talk to you about, you know, um, today about Mary. Uh, Mary and Joseph. Glory to God. And uh, let's open our Bibles here. Glory to God. And I'm, to, I'm going to say this about Mary. Is that she, you know, what, you know she was actually... Um, let me just kind of paraphrase this. She, you know, the angel came to Mary and said and called her a highly favored one. And so, so the angel Gabriel that, that stood at the right hand of the father. I'm just going to preach it this morning. At the right hand of the father said, you know, said, you know, oh, highly favored one. And she and she was, you know, uh, uh we was wondering what kind of salutation that was. Why would the angel say, you see, God's not a respecter of persons. I'm going to say that. But he is, he, he, he is a respecter of faith. And, you know, the Bible says that, that Mary was a virgin. And, and I see that as that she was pure in her walk with God. And I'm going to say this. If you want to see miracles in your life, and if you want to walk in a high faith, you have to walk in purity. You have to walk in holiness. You, you can't be compromising. You can't walk in compromise in your life and see the miracles of God in your life. See, what the enemy will do is he will try to get us compromising because we're, it's been a long time, God, and, and I'm not seeing any blessings, so maybe I, sh I can do it, you know, my way. No, you've got to do it God's way. You, what you compromise to get, you will end up losing eventually. And so lots of people out here, lots of Christians are compromising the truth of God's word to try to get something from the world. And if you continue to do that, you'll never see the true miracles of God in your lives. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? We can't allow, we can't allow impurity to, to, uh, to come uh, into our faith equation. In other words, we, we have to have a, the Bible talks about a pure faith. Glory to God. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? So we need to have a pure faith and a, sinc a sincere faith and a pure conscience. And as we have a sincere faith and a pure conscience like Mary, then, you know, he, she, she, she got the attention of God and she became the first, I was meditating on this, the first surrogate mother. Think about that. Anybody know what that is? Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, you got ladies now, you know, they, you know, they can't, can't get pregnant the right, uh, 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 the, the, the natural way, so they, you know, or you got somebody that wants a baby, I guess that it is, and they, and they have sperm and they impregnate a lady, but it's not really done the traditional way, and she carries the baby for the couple, right, and she's a surrogate, and so, but, but you know, Mary carried Jesus for the world, for God so loved the world, she carried Jesus for the world. Why? For the, for to, to save us from our sins. To get us a relationship with God. She said, she, you know, this is where she, she had such a purity of faith. She was engaged to, to, to Joseph. She was engaged to get married. And she had all these plans. And the angel drops down and changes her entire world. And you know what? She had so much faith. She said, yes. She, you know, she, I don't know if she was thinking it through. I wonder what Joseph's going to think about this. When I go to him and say, hey, um, hey, I'm pregnant, but it wasn't a man. It was God. And you know, you know Joseph said, what? You got a ring on your finger. We, we made all the plans and you doing this? I heard, I heard this one girl, she, 
uh, off the internet, I read this or heard this story. She got pregnant and she told her mom it was God. <laughs> and it's a special baby. God, God's doing it again. God's not doing it again. There's only one immaculate conception. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? That was a miracle. And when, when Mary, you know, when she said, how will this be? And, 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 the, and the angel said, the, the, the God will overshadow you. The spirit of God will overshadow you. And, 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 the, and, you, and the thing will be, and, and, and you will become pregnant with the word of God. When she said, let it be according to thy word. That's when conception came about in her body. When she received that word. And I'm going to say this. When you receive the promises of God. And you receive it from your. Uh, not just your head. A lot of us. We have a lot of promises. And we say. Oh yes. I believe that. Pastor. No. You don't believe it until it's really in your heart. You don't believe the word of God until you're doing the word of God. I believe God wants me to prosper. Do you tithe? Well, one time last year, on one check, I'm a tither. No, you're, you don't believe God wants you to prosper because you don't believe in the prosperity plan that God has set up. Boy, it's quiet in this Methodist church this morning. No, listen, if you truly believe in prosperity, that God does bless the faithful that give, you're going to be a giver. Amen. You're going to sow seed. Yes. You're, you're going you're gonna to believe. See, uh, the harvest of every person is, is, is all based on what he has sowed. What, what you sow yesterday is the harvest you're going to receive today. And, and by the measure you sow, it will be measured back to you. I want to encourage you to, to start sowing in this building fund and start doing something uncommon. Sell something and sow something big. If you're believing for a miracle... It's going to happen. Yes. Glory to God. I'm, I'm going to give an uncommon seed. God. Hallelujah. And you, I'm going to clear out my savings account. Now, it may be only 150 in it right now. <laughs> may not be a lot of faith there, but I'm going to clear it out. Are you here? I'm going to give my 150. Clear it out. So they, I got $25 in my saving account. You could have two mites. What is a mite? I don't know, but it sounds like a disease to me. But <laughs> mites. You need a, you, two mites. Two, two pennies, I think, or a penny. I think it's valued as a penny. The lady gave one penny, and Jesus, she gave it all. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? <laughs> Clear it out that hundred fifty dollar bank account. Seriously, <laughs> so what did what did Mary give? What what did she give? She gave her body. She gave her life. She 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 risked it all. What did she risk? She risked marriage with Joseph. Because she had, it had to be running through her head. Or maybe she, when she said, be unto to, to, to your word, let it be done. And she was walking by like, oh, crap, I just messed up. <laughs> and she got, what happened to the wedding thing? Oh, my Lord, Jesus. Have you ever said yes and gone, oh, my, why did I do that? Have you ever regret doing something nice? Giving some money away. You're, oh, you're so excited. You, 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 you wrote a check. You know, you cleaned out your bank account. And then you said, you knew God was telling you. And you walk away like, why did I do that? And you start thinking about all the money that you could be using. To... Has anybody been there? Have you ever give, given where it hurts? Well, Mary gave her life. What is Jesus is not requiring your tithe. He's requiring your life. He's requiring all of us because he gave us all. He gave, him, he gave us himself. So he requires us to, you know, he doesn't require, he expects us to give us Ourselves back to him. Amen. And that $150. And whatever you have. Give it to him. Why? What belongs to you belongs to him. But can I say something to you? What belongs to him belongs to you. Amen. The blessings of Abraham are yours. The blessings of, of, the, of the heavenlies. The Bible says, you know, 
we're co-heirs with Jesus Christ. What Jesus owns, we own. Are you hear what I'm saying to you folks? You have all the blessings of, uh, of heaven at your fingertips. That's why when we get to a point where we're totally sold out to God, there's nothing God will, will hold back from us. What we're trying to do is we're trying to make our life work. We're trying to figure it out. We're trying to figure out our finances. We're trying to figure out our health. We're trying to figure out our relationships. But we just need to let these things go and let go, as the Pentecostals would say, and let God. Has anybody ever heard that before? Let go and let God. When sometimes the Pentecostals would be praying for people to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. They would be exuberant. I don't know if you've ever seen this or not. We don't do that here. They, they'd be shaking one, let go, and somebody would be shaking let go, and, and, and somebody else would say, hold on, let go, and hold on. And he's like, what did I do? Hold on or let go, hold on or let go. <laughs> well, hold on to the promises and let go of your fears. We've got to hold on to the unchanging hand of Jesus. And, and so Mary, you know, she, 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 she said, I'm going to give it all for the glory of God. And really, she had a faith, you know, that Jesus talked about when the, when, the, when the man came to him with the disciples, when the centurion came to Jesus and said, my servant is lying sick at home, and, and I know you can heal my servant. And, and if you just, and Jesus said, I'll come and heal him. You know, at that time, Jesus was going, walk, I'll come. How far does he live? About 10 miles out. It'll take you about five days. I'll come in. Jesus, I'm ready to walk the walk. Jesus is always willing to go the extra mile for us. Are we willing to go the extra mile for Jesus? Jesus said, I'm ready. I'm, let's go. And the guy said, wait a second. Wait a second. You don't have to go to my house. Just speak the word. Just speak the word. And Jesus is backed up like, oh, man, I'm, I'm dealing with another level of faith here. You're a centurion. He said, I know what, what, what commanding, I'm a commanding, he was a commanding officer. And, and he knew, he said, I, I'm a commanding officer in, in the military. And I can say to this one, do this, and that one, do this. And, and I have my superiors tell me what to do. I obey their commands. And then I tell my people what to do. And they obey my commands. And I know if you just command it, it will happen. And Jesus stepped back and said, that's, hey, man, that's like faith like my mom. That's like faith like Mary. That was when she said, be it unto me. Let, let, it, let it be unto me as you have spoken it out of your mouth. And she, he said, that's the kind of faith I'm talking about. That's the kind of faith that you're going to have, high, you'll be highly favored over. That's the kind of, it's the kind of faith that God will look over a million people to get to the one that's in it. How many people do I have in here that has some faith? Faith will always take a risk. Faith will always step out into the water. Faith will always stretch out the staff to see the water roll back. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Faith will come, a, will, will, will fight a giant with impossible odds and wins. Yes. Faith will say, God, make the sun stand still. Like Joshua in that battle that day. And they were fighting that day. And Joshua said, God, we're, we're winning this battle. But the sun's going down. I'm asking you to keep the sun up. Keep, keep, keep daylight so we can win this battle. God's just looking for somebody to believe him. God's looking for somebody that has a dream. And I'm saying this to you today. That Exceed Life Church is moving forward in 2018. We're getting land. We're going we're gonna to have our roots. We're not going to win anymore. We're going to own. Well, pastor, what, what, what happens if it doesn't work out? Get out right now. Ushers, get that unbeliever believing out. Get that unbelieving believer out right now. No, you guys are going to agree with me. It's going to happen. You need to have centurion faith. Let it be according to your word. 
Let it be according to your word. Joseph, you know, he was, man, you know why I believe that, that Joseph was chosen to be with Mary? Because it could have been anybody. But, but God trusted Joseph. And Joseph had a characteristic that some of us lack. I'm working on this characteristic. And Joseph had a characteristic of mercy. Because, you know, when, he, when she said, I'm pregnant, but it wasn't, it wasn't that guy down the street, you know. It was God. And, he's, and Joseph's like, yeah, okay, I've heard that one before. <laughs> yeah, right. And so, yeah, Joseph said, that's it. And the Bible said that he was going to put her away quietly. And stuff. She could have possibly had her stoned, Amen. according to the law. Yeah. Amen. Some of us would have said, where's the biggest rock? But you know what he, he possessed? Mercy. And I'm going to say this. If you're going to be a part of a miracle or walk in the miracles of God, you're going to have to walk in truth. You're going to have to walk in love. You're going to have to walk in mercy. And he walked in mercy and God gave him a dream and said, listen, she is telling the truth. And he, I'm sure he woke up in a cold sweat. Oh, wow. Take her as your wife. Think about that. And the man had faith because he went through with it. He believed the dream, and God can give you a dream today. He can reveal some truth to you, but, you, but for you to fulfill that dream, you're going to have to step out and start doing something. You see, I'm going to say this, that whenever we receive a report, we receive the negative report. My, my, most of you don't know anything about that. But the, the Pembroke Manor where we're at, the second building, they gave us a notice where they wanted to triple our um, rent. And so we're kind of like... You know, we're tight as it is. Amen? Because I take great care of you guys. Coffee, all that. And we're, we're tight. And I, 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 I'm not, I can't put more. You know, and they, they want to triple my rent. They, want, they came with a letter. Either triple it or leave in 30 days, you know. And I said, uh, exit stage left. <laughs> because the manor's not that important to me. This building right here is important. The manner we do things over there, but it's, it's, it's smaller functions, and we can do it other places. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? And so what happened was that bad news turned me into a tiger. Because I said, that's it. I'm not going to lose on this deal. I'm going to win. And so you know what? I've, I've, God's been working on my heart for the past year, and, he thought, and he's been revealing to me, you know, start looking at churches. Uh, I believe that it was God. And co-op with another church. And, and possibly uh, do service in a church with a church building. And that's one idea that the Lord gave me. And, uh, and of course, the other idea is to buy a building. And so we're in a process of both. We might be in a, in a solid church building on Sunday mornings, all set up, a beautiful church auditorium. I don't hear anything coming from... From the, all the setup crew, let me hear amen on that. You guys that walk in, oh, it's so easy in here. I don't, I get my coffee and I go in here a little late and, uh, oh, the coffee's a little too warm this morning. To all the people that come in at seven, amen, pastor. We've been setting up. Are you here what I'm saying today? You guys have it cushy and easy that just come in. I'm not, you know, I love you guys. Thank you for coming in. If you didn't come in, I, I'd be just preaching to, you know, my mom and dad back there, but. Don't get me wrong. I love you guys. I love the crowd. I want the crowd here. Everybody that works in here and sets up, we're praying for the crowd to come in. Amen. We want you guys here. Praise God. We love you. Amen. That's why we do it. It's a labor of love. Praise God. Until you get to the point where you're walking in faith and now you're putting your hand to the plow and you're working with us. Glory to God. You're already working with us in some part because some of you are great givers and, and blesses us in that area, which we need uh, immensely. Amen. And so praise God. So God's doing it. So we're in a process of getting into a church building uh, and, and, and buying a building. And that's uh, and that's the 7-Eleven. Let me give you a scripture that God gave me because it seems like and I'm, I'm closing here. And I'm kind of going off my subject here. But, you know, as we were looking at this 7-Eleven, uh, you know, it seems as if, I don't know if you ever hear, sometimes God gives scriptures to other ministers when they're in a building, like, like this is your scripture you need to stand on. Have you ever heard that? 
I was, I was watching Bill Winston one day. Anybody ever watch Bill Winston? Yes. Anybody ever watch him? Anybody yes. watch him? He, he's a minister that got a, a mall. Yes. And, um, and uh, he was believing God for an airplane. And some preacher came in, a visiting preacher said, your airplane's in the Bible. He said, what? I haven't found it in the Bible. And, and the, 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 uh, the, the guest minister gave him a scripture, and he looked it up, and he said, you shall soar, something like, you shall soar on wings like eagles to your destination. Said, that's where my, air, that's my airplane. That's my airplane scripture. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? You've got to have a scripture for what you're believing God for. Yeah, I'm believing God for the moon. What are you standing on? I don't know. I'm just believing. No, you've got to stand on something. You've got to stand on the word of God. You got, that's, that's the only foundation you can stand on. Don't say, well, I'm just, believe, I'm just hoping and wishing it's going to happen. It ain't going to work. You've got to stand on the scripture to see the promises of God in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you, saints? I'm just hoping and wishing it's going to happen. I just, you know, where's the scriptures? So anyway, God gave me a scripture. You guys want to hear it? Yeah. You do? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I'm not one of these pastors that say, well, let me see if I can find a scripture that fits with our building program. And I'm going to look for it. It didn't happen that way. I just, you know, it, it, was, it was miraculous how it happened. I was just, I was doing a Google search on turning a, a 7-Eleven to a building, and that's where I found it at. And um, it's, uh, uh, do you want to turn it into scripture? It's, um, ready for this? It may be hard for some of you guys to remember the scripture, but try to plan it in your head. Write it down. It's Micah 7, 11. Micah 7, chapter 7, verse 11. Just in case you guys, is anybody connecting with this here? Okay. Do I got some sharp people in here? Micah 7, 11. It says, in that day, in, in, in the day for building, okay. It is the day for building your walls. On that day, your boundaries shall be enlarged. It's talk, it talks about building. Amen. It talks about that we, you know, it's really talking about it to Israel. It's talking about in that day, they will be building their walls. In that day, their territory will be enlarged. Another version says that, that in that day, you'll build your walls. In that day, you will not be limited any longer. How many people don't want to be limited anymore? I don't want to be limited by sickness. I don't want to be limited by debt. I don't want to be limited by bad relationships. I just don't want to be limited anymore. How many people are ready to get free with pastor? Gloria. How many people are ready for three hour services? On Sunday? Well, maybe not. Sunday mornings. Holy Ghost. Three hours. No, I'm kidding. But are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? It may not be three-hour services, but it may be two or three or four services of an hour-packed hour services of bringing the people in, glory to God. Are you ready for your miracle? Well, listen, if you're big enough to handle your problem, then you don't need a miracle. It's only when your problem gets so big, when it's $700,011, oh, God, how, I got hundred fifty in the bank account. And I, I'm supposed to be a leader. I'm giving $150. That's all right. God is good. But I'm clearing it out. Well, some of you might have 150000 in the bank account. Money you're sitting on that, that nobody knows about. And you need to plant a seed. Sow a seed. And, and a, again, an uncommon seed will be an uncommon blessing in your lives. Do you believe that today? Do you believe that God is ready to do some miracles in your lives? You, all you have to do is start stepping out, believing God, and obey what God tells you to do. And I want to encourage you, start sowing big seed. We're believing. Who, who's going to give the first 100000 Do I have anybody with faith in here? How about the first dollar? No. Who's, start believing God. Believe God. Maybe you don't have anything. I'm going to believe that I can give God $10,000. I'm going to believe it's going to come into my hands. And I'm going to believe that I'm going to be able to put $10,000 in the building fund. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? God can open the doors. Yes. Why don't you believe God for a miracle that he'll put it in your hands? Yes. Just believe God. 
Pastor, if I, get, if I believe God get that 10,000, I might end up in Hawaii. This. <laughs> cheating God out of his money. Listen. Believe God. Have some faith. Have a pure heart. Without holiness, no man will seek the Lord. And it will happen. Do you believe that today? Amen. I'm going to say this as closing. God's about ready to give some of you a miracle. He's about ready to break through in your life. But he's about ready to make some of you miracles. In other words, you're going to be somebody else's miracle. And I believe when we start becoming somebody's miracle, then abundant miracles start coming our way. You believe that today? Did you receive it this morning? Well, I believe you have. Let's, let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, we honor you today. Father, we just thank you that you're so good. You're glorious. You're awesome, Father. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, for this church. And Father, I thank you for the people in this church. And I thank you, Father, perhaps we have visitors today. And Father, I just thank you, Father, for those that are here today. Maybe you're here today. And the audience, maybe you're watching online. And, and just like Mary, she, she just, you know, didn't just say yes to give, a little, to give an offering. She gave her life to God. She gave her body. She gave her whole future. And I want to encourage you today. Maybe you're holding on to a little bit of your life. Maybe, maybe it's part God and part you. And I'm going, to, I'm going to encourage you today. Just let go and let God. Give God everything. And so, I, you know, maybe you're today, maybe you never asked Jesus in your heart. Maybe he's not your Lord. I want you, you know, today the Bible says it's the day of salvation. And you may not have another day. If God's drawn your heart today, uh, just pray this prayer. I believe you'll be translated into God's kingdom of love. And you will experience all the best that God has for you. You say this after me in your heart. Say, dear God, I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Jesus, I believe that you were raised from the dead. For my justification. Jesus, I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. Heavenly Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.